Hello, I'm Jean. I'm a year two information system student studying in the School of Computing in NUS. And for today's video, it's a little bit more academic. It is the everything you need to know about information systems for year one freshmen. And when I was applying for NUS information systems, there was no YouTube video about uh, what I should be doing or uh, what are the modules that I should be taking. The information systems course is a little bit different from the main CS course as well as the BZA course. And I hope this video will be of some help to any of my IS juniors who are struggling um, to bid your mods or you're not sure what mods to take right now. So I will be covering a few things in this video. The first one would be the IS curriculum. So you might be asking what am I supposed to be studying at the end of four years. So I'll cover the IS curriculum for the prospective students. And the second point would be uh, the most important which is the recommended study plan. And as you know you would have to bid for your modules in NUS. So I will be linking a Google Sheets study plan for you guys who are coming in from JC or Poly background as well as my own study plan. And lastly, I will also share what I wish I knew before uh, doing information systems and enrolling for the modules that I took. So without further ado, <laughs> let's get started. So this is how you're going to navigate this video. Um, I will be placing timestamps at the bottom of the video so you'll be able to uh, You'll be able to skip back and forth to the parts that you want and also this video is uh, it serves as a guide to the blog post that I made which you can also find in the description below so if you need a more textual guide regarding the resources as well as uh, my, my own experience in uh, information systems then please check that out so before I start this video, I want to give a introduction on my background so you know what are the kinds of modules that I have to take. This affects the modules that I take because I come from a JC background and I also study uh, some CAT modules which will be replacing the general education modules. So I'll go ahead and talk about IS curriculum. So. Uh, I'm going to draw your attention to the uh, computing website for information systems and under the summary of degree requirements for uh, information systems. So let me run you through the curriculum. There are a few uh, points, there are few groups of modules that you have to take. So there are the university level requirements. We usually call this the GE pillars or the university pillars. You have your core modules your program electives as well as your unrestricted electives or what we call UEs. Alright, so let's look at the university level requirements. There are six uh, university level requirements in total and if you are staying in a residential college, you would be taking uh, the RC modules rather than these uh, six university pillars. So do check out the websites for your RCs if you're taking it. If not, you'll be taking the GE pillars. So you'll be taking uh, one, two, three, four, four, G four GEs uh, plus your CS 1010 as well as your BT 1101 to cover the digital literacy as well as the data literacy pillar respectively. Uh, these two pillars are are pretty new so if you ask any of your seniors they might not have heard of uh, doing these two pillars. There's also another one which is computing ethics and it is IS 1108 uh, which is digital ethics and data privacy. There is not much information about this mod because as of uh, the academic year 22-23 um, this is a new module. So let me run you through the program requirements uh, with your core modules as well as your program electives. So there are a list of uh, core modules and no, you do not take them um, in this order. Uh, you might see that, hey, uh, why are there so many different codes and how will I go about doing them? You can skip to the recommended study plan if you want a idea of how to plan out your modules. So core modules are usually taken in throughout your four years in NUS. So for your program electives, you have to complete five modules to be able to specialize in either digital business, financial technology, IT solutioning, 
IT business, innovation and entrepreneurship, IT security and legal aspects. So these are modules that you'll be taking from year three to year four onwards or maybe even in year two. Then you also have your unrestricted electives, which are your UEs. You have 40, M you have 40 MCs. So this equates to about um, 10 modules that you can take given that there are all four MCs each. So that is how you read the curriculum that is in the NUS website. And for me, the first time that I read this, I was thinking, okay, so what am I actually studying? So let me draw attention to the chart that I have on my website. And this is from the, this I got this off one of the briefings from the NUS School of Computing, which I think ties um, it up nicely. So at the end of four years, you'll be hitting a few milestones. So the first one would be foundation, and that is to in terms of analytics and statistics and computing. And after that, you will develop competency with full stack development, project management, as well as professionalism and communication. And lastly, you will develop expertise with your specializations and your industry capstone project. So in your foundation, there will be a few modules that you will have to take. So in the analytics and statistics portion, uh, there is MA1312, MA1521, as well as MA2002. The math modules are usually uh, pre-allocated to you depending on your uh, previous math background. So for me, I took MA1521. But let me delve into the study plan later. Um, you will also be taking ST2334 as well as DT1101. As for computing, you will be doing your CS1010J um, and CS2030 and CS2040. On top of these modules, you will also be doing your uh, GE uh, modules. So in a semester, you can expect yourself to read about 5 modules. So let me run you through the study plan that I did uh, in my year 1. So let's dive into the modules that I took for year 1 SEM 1. So there are three underlined modules, CS1010J, MA1521 as well as IS1103. These are the modules that were pre-allocated to me because I came from a GC background. What this means is that you will not have to bid for it and it is pre-assigned to you. So since we are in a computing course, we would definitely have to take programming methodology and for IS, you would take CS1010J, which is in Java. If you want more information about this course, I did a module review and it's also on my website. And this is a prerequisite to CS2030 as well as CS2040. Alright, so the next one will be MA1521, which is Calculus for Computing. Um, I took this because this was pre-allocated to me and if you are thinking of transferring to computer science, you should definitely keep this um, math module as an option for you to switch courses. And then there is the infamous IS1103, which is Ethics in Computing. It is no longer uh, offered and is being replaced with IS1108. And then I also took um, a CAT module and if you are not staying in an RC, this can be replaced with one of your GEs. I also took ES1103 English for academic purposes just because your girl didn't really do well for GP so I had to take this module as a, uh, as a filler English mod but this was one of the best modules I took simply because of how um, easy it was. So it has definitely saved my cap. You're only required to take this module if you have been asked to do the qualifying English test. And if you want more information, there's also a blog post that I made on my website. I also did Career Catalyst, uh, CF G1002 as one of my UEs because I just want to try out how can I use the UEs. So that is it for my year 1 SEM 1. Then for year 1 SEM 2, um, I had to start taking some of the business and analytics mods. So I started off with BT1101, Introduction to Business Analytics, uh, as well as CS2030, Programming Methodology, 
this was uh, after you after I did CS 1010G. I also did uh, ST2334 probability and statistics as well as IS2101 business and technical communications and I also did another CAT mod, CAT mod which is UTW1001D. I would urge you to look at the different study plans for uh, based on your previous backgrounds because some of them are a little bit more different. Let's say you come from a poly background that's not related to computing or um, if I'm not wrong engineering. So uh, one of the differences is that you would have to take two math mods um, instead of one. So if you come from a GC background and you did H2 math, you also only have to do MA1521. But uh, if you come from poly and it is a non-computing course, you have to take MA1031 as well as MA1312 just to uh, supplement. So let's move on to what I wish I knew when uh, I was studying my modules as well as studying and maybe some of the regrets that I have. So let's just jump into my year 1 SEM 1 and as you can see, I had a really 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 sparse timetable and this is the most beautiful timetable I've seen just because I had so much time. <laughs> I have so much free time. So for CS 1010J, this was an introductory module and for me it was pretty manageable because I came from a A-level computing background. Um, one key tip that I have for anybody that is starting out uh, and you might not have experience with programming is to try uh, the CS50 by Harvard. I think you might have heard it by now. But another thing that I would also recommend, especially for students that are doing Java, is to actually follow YouTube videos that explain the concepts and theory um, in the specific prog programming language that you will be using. And so I listed some of the YouTube videos that I used when I was learning CS 1010G, so you can definitely check that out in my blog post. This module was pretty manageable. Just do your like the weekly tasks that you have to do and be consistent with coding and with everything. Try to be consistent with your work and the exams for this module are pretty tricky so it, it definitely helps if you are a very conscientious and cautious person. So definitely check your code. Moving on to ME1521, I think this module was the bane of my existence in my year 1 SEM 1. This was definitely a module that I did not like, but it was a prerequisite to many of the CS modules and ST2334. I didn't really like this module because it encompassed proving using calculus, and maybe that is your thing. But that is definitely not my thing, so I found it challenging at, as it is uh, different from the usual way of solving problems in H2 math. One thing I wish I knew was that maybe I didn't actually have to take MA1521. Because in font size like 10 on the information systems curriculum website, it says that MA1521 is to be chosen if student if the student wants to keep the option of switching to computer science. And for me, I am not thinking of changing to a computer science major anytime. So I think one of the modules that you can take uh, as an alternative is MA1321. And that is, this is definitely a module that is much simpler. Uh, Alright, I also took ES1103, which is English for Academic Purposes. I took this as part of a university requirement after I received band 2 for my qualifying English test and this module was a purely English module. What I mean was is that they teach you the basics of English, the basics of writing essays. Um, and for me, I and enjoyed this mod because of its low uh, workload and I do enjoy uh, 
learning about English. Secretly at heart, I'm a lit major. <laughs> so I liked this module. And so what I wish I knew was, given that this module has a very low workload, um, I could have considered taking it during uh, a special term. I know there are year 3 seniors that do this or, or take an extra module in year 1 SEM 1 so aka overload uh, and the module that I may have overloaded was BT1101 so if you want more information about this module please visit my blog post which I explained um, the qualifying English test as well as some of the past year paper questions. Alright, then I went ahead to take uh, CFG1002 which is Career Catalyst this was a module that was fairly simple, there was no exams. The One of the key takeaways that I took from this module was uh, to write a resume and to prepare for a virtual interview. So I do think that it has helped me a little bit because now I am, you know, putting myself out there on YouTube and it has helped me learn about how to speak a little bit more confidently to properly write my resume and also update my LinkedIn regularly. <laughs> and the last module that I took was UTC 1409 which is the Junior Seminar, The Pursuit of Happiness. Um, this is a CAP module. In my semester, it is taught by Prof uh, Tambaya Syok. I really enjoyed this class simply because um, it teaches you about the economics of happiness and this junior seminar um, had papers that were pretty interesting and they and it didn't have any examination piece or very difficult assignments. So I definitely enjoyed this module. So if you want to chill, like live, laugh, love more, <laughs> I really recommend this UTC 1409. Now, let's move on to year one SEM 2. And <laughs> as you can see by the timetable, uh, shit went down. This was a semester of uh, trying to figure out the workload and to balance 2k mods as well. So let's take a deep dive into the modules that I took for us, uh, Year 1 SEM 2. Look at IS2101 which is Business and Technical Communications. So for this module, you had to do a presentation with your group almost every single week. It was uh, different presentations about uh, in a company setting. So I think this module was pretty interesting. This module actually taught me more soft skills, how I should carry out myself um, when it comes to having uh, virtual presentations. And I do think that if you put in a decent amount of effort into this module, you can definitely score well. What I wish I knew was there are a lot of people that go into these, this mod IS2101 with the mindset of SUing but I do think that you should give yourself some chance to perform in this module. Uh, this is one of the modules that requires more of your uh, presentation skills so if you're like somebody like me which likes to talk uh, this is a module that you might score well in so definitely try your best for this module um, because it's a communications mod. The next module that I'll be talking about is uh, CS2030 which is Programming Methodology 2. Oh my gosh! This module was extremely challenging for me because um, it drilled into the concepts that I learned in CS1010 uh, and the prof of my semester, which is Prof Henry Chia, he was uh, he was a good teacher in explaining concepts, but he was also um, very good at setting exam papers. So he's very good at what he's doing. What I wish I knew was a lot of your seniors will tell you, but start your project early, trying to catch up on the uh, previous lectures. Uh, I share similar. Uh, experiences with some of my friends who said that they uh, only started revision late later during the semester and so maybe what I could have done is to make sure that I understood about 80% of the lectures um, every single week such that I was not super blur by uh, after recess week. Alright so moving on to BT1101 Introduction to Business Analytics. Um, I took this in year 1 SEM 2 but you can take it in year 1 
SEM1 as well. Uh, so for Introduction to Business Analytics, it is using R. What I wish I knew about this module. Um, there are pros and cons of doing uh, this module in Year 1 SEM1 and Year 1 SEM2. So if you do it in Year 1 SEM1, like I said, in Year 1 SEM1, you will have a lower lower workload, so you can definitely afford to concentrate your time in BT1101. By doing it in SEM1, it allows you to do BT2102 in SEM2. Then for ST2334, Probability and Statistics, this was very, very, very similar to H2 uh, Math, Probability, the Statistics portion. So I didn't have a lot of trouble doing Probability and Statistics. One thing that you take note was that the final exam was 70%. I don't know whether that's legal, but it was not very legal for my mental health. So we only had one exam for ST234, uh, which is 70%, followed by three other like mini exams. So every exam you do counts towards your grade. One thing I wish I knew was perhaps I could do this module uh, maybe in my year two or maybe in next change just because this module is not a prerequisite to any of the other modules that I will be taking. I did struggle a little bit because this was a 2k mod um, but I'm glad that I got it over and done with. I also did a UTW1001D Self Society and a Digital Tsunami Era. So for this module, uh, it covered some of the prevailing uh, phenomena that were observed online uh, and how digital communication has shaped um, to change the way that we communicate and respond to each other as human beings. I would say that uh, I didn't think I don't think I enjoyed the module as much as I would like to, uh, given that this was like my first choice of this was my first choice for my uh, IEM. Yeah. So what I wish I knew was maybe try for another IEM. This was not something that was in my area of uh, interest, so I could have taken maybe a module that was that I liked, but I, I wouldn't have known. This is just looking back at it right now, but maybe you would have enjoyed it, I'm not very sure. So in this video, I covered a few topics. Number one would be the curriculum as well as uh, number two, the study plans, and uh, three, my experience and what my regrets and what I wish I did. I hope these help you in your module planning and module bidding, and I hope this serves as a guide as you navigate through uh, the starting of your uni life. It's going to be a very exciting journey so that you don't really have a lot of questions in your mind. But if you are a information system student that is coming in, first of all, congratulations. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And if you like, you can also drop me a DM on Instagram or in my email, whichever you prefer. So I'll leave you with this video and I'll see you soon. Bye!